The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that the large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is, come, who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Pakibati din ang good morning ang ating mga katabi po. Especially to our visitors, pilgrims who have come here from different places. It is a holiday and we greet our Muslim brothers and sisters. Happy Eid al-Fitr. This is the end of their month of Ramadan and also to our online parishioners we are also praying for your petitions and prayers in this Eucharist ngayong taon pong ito ay nagdugtungan o naghalo sabay-sabay ang mga dakilang kapistahan ng Judaism, Christianity and Islam all Abrahamic religions Halos magkakasabay ang Passover, ang Easter, at ang Edel Fitir. Magkakasabay na pinagdiriwang ang kagandahang loob ng Diyos, bagamat magkakaiba ng pananampalataya, pero iisa ang amang sumusubaybay sa atin. So to our, to our brothers and sisters, to our Muslims, to, to the Jews who are believers in Judaism, and of course to us Christians, we belong to one family of God. We belong to the family that is cared for by God, our Lord. Sa ating mga pagbasa, again, I would like to refer you to our gospel and first reading. They're always connected with each other this season of Easter. In our gospel today, in the first reading, there is an apparent contrast between the attitudes of the disciples in the gospel and the disposition of the apostles in the first reading. In the gospel, we heard about the miracle of the multiplication of loaves. And we heard about Philip and Andrew. Ang unang tinanong ng Panginoon ay si Andres, o oh, si Philip. Philip, pakakainin natin ang mga tao. Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? Ang sabi naman ni Philip kay Lord ay, Lord, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. Dami-dami niyan, 5,000 mahigit yan. Paano natin pakakainin yan, Lord? Sabi ni Philip, 
Andrew found a boy with five loaves and two fish. Ay nakakatuwa nandito yung mga bata kasi mahalaga din ang naibibigay ng mga bata. Five loaves and two fish, sabi ni Andrew. Para, para, again, the lack of faith and belief in Andrew's voice, ang sabi niya, what good are these for so many? Si Philip, napapakain yan, daming perang kailangan dyan. Si Andrew, meron tayo dito, pero konti, hindi kakasya to. That was the attitude and disposition of the apostles in the gospel today. Contrast that with the disposition of the apostles in our first reading. Magkaibang magkaiba po. Sa Ebanghelyo, nag-aaral pa lang sila, kinikilala pa lang nila si Jesus, natututo pa lang sila. In the book of the Acts of the Apostles, after Pentecost, now they are given this Again, I go back to that word, boldness. They are given this parousia to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. No longer as a disciple, but as an apostle that is sent. So today, we focus on word number 13, and we get that from our first reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Again, if you have your Bible with you, we are towards the end of chapter 5. And we hear this story again of the disciples. They are defended by an unlikely ally by the name of Gamaliel. Gamaliel is a Pharisee, but he is some sort of friendly to the Christians. Si Gamaliel ay sympathetic to the believers of Jesus. Pinagtanggol niya. Not exactly out and out disciple, but Gamaliel said to the chief priest, the Sadducees, and the leaders of the people, the Sanhedrin. Because Gamaliel was a respected Pharisee, ang sabi niya sa mga kasama niya, sesentensyahan natin itong mga to. Ikukulong natin, ikukrucify natin, kagaya ng master nila na si Jesus. Mag-ingat tayo. Kasi sa kasaysayan, sabi ni Gamaliel, no? again, let me just go through the first reading. Sa kasaysayan, ginawa na natin yan. You look at Theodas in some time ago, ang sabi niya, he gave two examples, Theodas and Judas of Galilee. Sabi niya, kung sa Diyos yan, if it is from God, it will prosper. But if it's not from God, it will not die a natural death. So let them be. Huwag na nating pahirapan ng mga sarili natin. Kung pahirapan nyo sila, dadami lang mga yan, huwag na nating gaanong pahirapan, huwag na nating pansinin. Look at Judas, namatay siya, together with his disciples, 400 of them, they just died a natural death. They scattered. And look at Judas, the Galilean, again, the zealot, na marami din siyang mga follower. Pero nung namatay si Judas, the Galilean, nawala din yung kanyang mga alaga. So, same thing with this group. Gamaliel was saying to his people, to the Jews, same thing with this group. If it is from God, ah, baka nilalabanan mo pa ang Diyos kapag ka sila'y uh, mas salo ninyong pinahirapan. Pero ang sabi ng, ni, ni Gamaliel sa kanila, hayaan nyo na sila. Ayan. At pinapalo nila yung mga alagad. The disciples of Jesus were flogged, they were punished. And here's the reaction. He is, uh, here is our word number 13. Nung sila'y pinahirapan when they were persecuted and yes, they were tortured, flogged, they rejoiced. The word that we chose today, rejoicing, even if they were suffering, even if they were being punished for proclaiming the good news, they rejoice that they have been found worthy to suffer this honor for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. They rejoice in the midst of their suffering. Kairontes. Rejoicing. Kaire. Kairontes or Kaire is joy. In the Easter recollection that we will have this April 29, I'll develop this idea of joy in Easter. 
that we are all called to proclaim with boldness, but do so with the disposition of joy, not of rancor or, or, or negativity, not of disappointment, but of joy. The disposition of the apostles in the midst of their trials and hardships and sufferings caused by the Sanhedrin and the chief priests and the elders, it was not to react with violence. It was not to retaliate with arms. It was to proclaim the gospel with joy. And this is different. Even Gamaliel and the Pharisees were so surprised because look at these people. They are so crazy. They are preaching about this name of Jesus Christ and we are even persecuting them. Pinapalo natin sila, kinukulong natin sila, tinotorture natin sila and yet all of them are smiling. They are rejoicing. Kairontes. Jo rejoicing, you hear that also in the Annunciation. Hail, O favored one, rejoice, O Mary. The same word was used. Kaire, kikirito mene, rejoice, favored one. And the same thing here that is used. Kairontes, kaire, rejoicing. You also hear this from Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12. In the Beatitudes. The disciples were so so happy. They were rejoicing because the Beatitudes that Jesus proclaimed in the mountain, in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Same word in the Beatitudes. Rejoice even if you are persecuted. Kairontes. So brothers and sisters, today we look at our lives and obviously there is suffering. Obviously there is pain, especially for those who are ill. Obviously there are hardships and trials and problems. Kasama na po yan sa buhay. Hindi po mawawala yan. Pero ang nawawala madalas ay yung kagalakan. We lose that joy when we are in pain. We lose that joy when we are problematic. We lose that joy whenever we experience severe hardships in our family, in our personal lives. So I pray for you. Let us pray for one another that today, in spite of all, we rejoice. Kairontes. We find that joy not outside. We find that joy because we have the good news in our hearts. Bakit yung mga alagad ay patuloy na nagpapahayag ng mabuting balita kahit na nga pinagsabihan na sila, kahit na nga pinahirapan na sila? Because they are just so happy to share the experience of Jesus in their lives. How Jesus loved them. Ngayon, nagbabalika na ang kanilang alaala. This Acts chapter 5, friends, if, if you would ask me, nung nakikita ng mga alagad na nandun na, nagkakatotoo na yung mga propesya ni Jesus, dun nila nakikita na at binabalikan yung mga magagandang bagay na ginawa ni Jesus sa kanila. And it could be that one of the reasons why they were full of joy because they remember that Jesus fed them in the wilderness when they were hungry. Siguro yung mga alagad, kanilang binabalikan yung mga magagandang alaala na binigay sa kanila ni Jesus. Kaya ngayon, they are just so happy to share what they have seen, what they have heard when Jesus was there with them. And now that Jesus is gone, but He lives in them through the Spirit, they are happy to proclaim the joy of the gospel. In our reading today, we hear the word euangelisomenai. Euangelion, preaching the good news in the midst of hardship and persecution. At yun ang binibigay sa atin sa araw na ito. God will provide. 
So do not worry too much. Stop complaining. Stop living your life in anger or resentment. Stop living your life in regrets. God provides. And He wants us to be happy. He wants us to find that joy in our heart. So tanungin natin ang ating mga sarili sa araw na ito, where is that joy in your heart? Bakit punong-puno na ng galit, ng hinanakit, ng kalungkutan? Where is that good news in your heart? That is Jesus in your life. That Christ lives and comes to save us, to defend us, to sustain us and help us. God provides. Let us rejoice in His love. Pwede pong maupo saglit for a short announcement. First of all, thank you very much everyone for coming. Salamat sa inyong pagdalo sa ating banal na misa. Gayun din ang ating mga online parishioners. Thank you for being with us. Again, we greet our Muslim friends sa uh, Happy Edil Fitir this day of their end of the Ramadan, their feast also ang kanilang pagdiribang. So we rejoice with them. Kairontes, do not lose the joy in your heart. Joy in the midst of suffering. That's what the early Christians had. In spite of the hardships, they found joy in their heart because Jesus lives in them. Kaya ako lagi natutuwa pag nandito yung mga batang ito kasi ang mga batang ito ng asilo, no? Sisters, no? Madaming pinagdaanan ng mga bata na to, pero they never lost their joy and hope in their life. No? Kaya they always energize me. No? Kasi ako ko alam doon lang ang kwento ng mga batang ito ay talagang mahihiya kayo sa sarili niyo. <laughs> there must be joy in the midst of our suffering. There must be hope in the midst of our hardships. There must be peace in the midst of the chaos around us. That's the gift of the Lord, the risen Lord. Amen? And dahil dyan, uh, iniimbitahan ko kayo sa ating pong Easter recollection sa uh, April 29. Uh, that's after our 5 p.m. anticipated Mass. We would like to explore the topic of joy, celebrating the joys of our hearts and homes. During the Lenten season, we talk about healing the wounds in our hearts and homes. But this time, we look at the joys. We should celebrate the joys in our lives because that is the gift of Easter. Joy, peace, and hope. Also, I'd like to invite you to join me in uh, going to visit the shrine of Santa Maria Goretti in Tuno, Italy. This is being organized by our parish together with Catholic Travel. Uh, ito po is November 4 to 10. Eh? Really? 18. November 4 to 18. So those who are interested to join me in this uh, pilgrimage, this is to... Uh, to introduce to us the devotion to Santa Maria Goretti. Ako po, personally, hindi ko talaga kilala si Santa Maria Goretti before I got assigned here. Naririnig ko siya, pero hindi ko gaanong alam yung kwento niya. But when I was assigned here, I was really blown away by, by the story of Santa Maria Goretti. So, the parish decided to go to Netuno, Italy, and also to ask you to join us. Yeah, so, November 4 to 18. That would be our pilgrimage to Netuno, to the shrine of Santa Maria Goretti, and also to the shrine of Saint Padre Pio, our secondary patron, to the shrine of Saint Francis of Assisi, of Saint Rita de Casha, and of course the Vatican in Saint Peter's Basilica. And who knows, we get to meet the Pope there. No? <laughs> uh, so November 4 to 18. So you are all invited to this pilgrimage. We all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our loving God bless you and your family. May the Lord fill your hearts with peace and joy in the midst of your trials and hardships, adversities in life. May the Lord provide for your needs. May the Lord multiply once again the loaves in your hearts, in your homes, that you may never be in want, that you may always be given the daily needs and sustenance 
that the Lord provides. May the Lord give you joy in your heart. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.